All right. I think that should... Is that working now? Okay. All right, well, that was stupid. I'm sorry about that. The, uh, the USB slid in imperceptibly out of the port, and uh, I didn't realize that it was out. Um, because that's... That's how life goes, really. Okay. So, um, how is everyone progressing with the project? Have you all uh, fought fought with the AVL tree a little bit? So, hopefully. Oh, you just got that outline. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to try my best. Maybe I'll have some time this week now um, to do a little bit of work with people individually. So um, basically, uh, if you want like office hours for the project, um, uh, for the project, um, I should be around. You can kind of schedule them with me. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, that's, uh, you know, copy paste is progress of a sort. Um, I would like to work with at least some people, anyone who's ready and who has some questions or has some need for, for a little bit of a push, um, you know, you can always come to me and, uh, and I'll try to give you a little bit of an extra push on the project. Um, we can work through some problems. I, I've only implemented about one half of the project so far. I haven't done the splay tree half. I only did the AVL tree half. Um, but I think I might try to, I'll get the homework grading started with the uh, grader today and I will, she's actually been good. She's been asking about it, but I've been so busy I haven't even been able to coordinate. So that's, that's mostly my fault. Um, I'll try to get the homework coordinated today, and hopefully homework two for you should be out today. Um, let me explain why I've been waiting on homework two. Um, so basically, I, I like to have some math parts, right, and some like theory, and maybe some coding um, on, on homeworks, but this project is so gigantic that I think what I'm going to do for homework two is just cut off the coding part, so no coding for homework two just math parts in theory um, and I'll try to make it re like maybe five problems something relatively small um, in a normal for a normal project this would not be such an issue but I just I can't in all good conscience be like here do more programming do more coding like if if you sp if you sit down uh, at sea lion or visual studio um, Right. If you if you're working on on this stuff, you know you should not you you should not be doing coding for the homework. Well, I mean I understand. Um, I, yeah. Let me. Uh, okay. So. Um. All right. Uh. What else is there to say in terms of uh, stuff like this? So. Uh. There was a flag added. to the B node, I think. So I think you have to like re re download, um, like underscore flag added to the B node. So you either have to re download or like recopy this, this flag, um, into, into your files. So if you've done work on the, the B node or done work on the AVL tree, or I mean the splay tree, then you should kind of make sure that the B node has this flag variable in it. And if uh, you haven't done any work yet, then just make sure you recopy. Um, so, okay. Um, all right. I think that's 
that's all the announcements that I have for this exact moment. So let's uh, have I looked at the file copying function given to us? Uh, do I approve? I have. I honestly, um, I you know, I'm going to admit that I've been pretty busy with 201. Uh, so yeah, well, I, I just you know. Whenever I see uh, some strangeness going on, yeah, the load file. Um, I don't think that does the splitting for you, does it? Has anyone actually run that function? I haven't even run it. Um, if it does the splitting for you, that's one thing. If it doesn't do the splitting for you, then then maybe we'll we'll put the splitting in. Um, okay. So today. Uh, I wanted to basically just go over, whoa, no, 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 cancel, cancel. Um, I wanted to go over, oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Okay. <clears throat> Basically, I just wanted to do red black trees today. Today is the red black tree day. Yeah, induction is hard. I normally do a review, but the, I, I admit that the problem with online teaching is that I teach at about like a 70% or a 50% speed, so I cover. I cover a lot less in online teaching than I do in real teaching or real life or whatever you want to call it. Um, okay, so there's basically three things that we want to do uh, when we talk about red black trees. We want to talk about insert and we want to talk about delete. And then we talk maybe a little bit about theory. And so, <clears throat> basically when you're inserting, um, oh, let's talk about the rules full first. So, I think, ah, cool, okay. Hmm, okay, maybe I should open. this okay cool of course all right so let's just go over the rules for red black so the rules are here one uh, every node is either red or black. So that's not terribly surprising. Two, uh, the root is black. <clears throat> so you can actually make red black trees, well, you can make like a, a slightly lesser version of red black trees where you don't enforce this rule, um, but it's probably in a way it's like the least important of the rules, but it does the rule does come into effect when you go back up to the root and you ask yourself, do I if if the root ends up as a red node, the basically this rule just says recolor it black. Uh, every leaf is black. <clears throat> but really, um, in red black trees, what they mean by leaves are null pointers. So they don't actually mean the last node in the tree. You can have you can have a black node with a red child, um, like this. Like there's no problem with this. And there's no the the color of the edges is is irrelevant. The only thing that matters is the color of the nodes. So this is completely fine because we pretend like each one of these has a 
I'm just drawing them as like little golf clubs or flags or whatever. These are all little null pointers. And so this rule here is kind of um, basically um, it, it matters when you do the insertion and you ask about the uncle's color because sometimes the uncle can be a null pointer. Um, but anyway, we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, four, if a node is red, so if a node is red, right, it must have uh, then both, uh, both children are black. And so this is kind of the rule that enforces the height, right? So this is this does like 80% of the work of a red black tree. Like most of the rest of this stuff is just kind of like every node's either red or black. Okay, so we're already kind of that's this is a rule that we're kind of assuming. Um, it's going to be pretty hard to well, some of the deletion algorithms violate this rule. And that's how you get the fix up. Um, yeah, well, okay, so, and then uh, the root is black, every leaf is black, and then five, the last the, the, the last rule is that um, the all simple paths from the root to a leaf have the same number of black nodes. And so that gives right, uh, rise to the definition of a black height, right? We, I usually call it like black height of a node, right? And the thing is that black height doesn't exist unless this is true, right? Because the thing is that um, basically we're assuming that this thing is equal to one plus the black height of the of the, like the right child but we're also assuming it's equal to one plus the um, black height of course my microphone's in the way I can't see black height of the left child so the point is that if these are not equal then the definition of black height doesn't actually uh, work so okay so those are the rules so now let's talk again about insertion. So let's talk about insertion. Right. And so how do we insert into a tree like this? Well, what you do, basically the there's like a sixth, like a secret sixth rule, which is always insert as red. And so there's a reason why we insert as the red as a red node. And that's because if a red node becomes a child of a red node, it forces us to do some fix up. And so if we always inserted black nodes into the tree, then uh, we would never actually violate. Um, let's see where where's all this stuff. So if, if we inserted only black nodes into the tree, then we would never actually violate rule four. And we'd be violating rule five eventually, but the thing is that we wouldn't be able to detect it locally. We wouldn't be able to just look at the child, the children and the parents and detect that we'd violated the rule. But if we insert as red, then we can always detect um, like a rule uh, four violation. And remember, because we don't actually keep, we don't actually remember the black height at any node. That's the important thing about red black trees is that you don't actually have like a black height variable. Unlike in AVL trees where you have a height variable in the red black tree, you don't have a height variable. Um, you just have the red of the black token or flag or whatever you want to call it. So, okay. So there's basically two cases uh, of red black insertion, basically. I think there's, there's some exception when you do the root node, but the point is that uh, it does, it's not, terribly important. So, um, so for instance, let's say that you're inserting into uh, a tree like this.
And so you insert a, well, actually, so that can't work. Um, let's say we insert here, and then we insert here, right? So just keep in mind that this, this node is not necessarily the root, so not always the root. It's just where, this is just the grandparent of where we are. And this is the parent, right? And this is the node we're inserting. And then this is the uncle, okay? So the question is always like, what do you do in order to fix something like this? And so uh, what you basically do here in order to maintain the black height is that if the node, if the uncle is red, so you, you look at the uncle and you say, if red, we recolor. And let me show you what, we, what that means. So what that means is that what we do is we pull this, this black color down to the uncle and down to the parent. So when we redraw, we get the uncle Excuse me, couldn't get to a tissue in time. Okay. Um, and then here's the node, it's still red. And then here's the grandparent. And now, so the question is, did, does this now violate any rules, right? And so the answer is not here, right? Because does this violate rule four? And you say, well, this is a black parent of a red child, so that's okay. Um, the black height here, right? BH was the black height. Black height here is BH, BH, BH. So it's all the same black heights because we haven't introduced any new uh, nodes. Here is BH minus one because here is the here's a red node now. But then here is black height and black height. So this is fine, right? This is okay. Um, so no black height violations anymore. The only possible violation that still happens is actually a, um, so what I should say here is that we, we don't, so uh, rule five is good. Rule five, which is the black height rule, is good. What about the, but what about rule four, which is the red children of red parents? And you're like, well, this, this fixed this, uh, red parent of a red child. So now this this thing is black. But what happens if the grandparent is not the root of the tree and this node was red, right? So what do we do then? And so what you what you do then is that you set G, right? Set N is equal to G and you basically fix up again, right? Okay, so that's, this is one half of the insertion. All right. So now I'm going to do the other case of insertion. So the other case of insertion is where the uncle is black. And now the thing is that uh, the grandparent <clears throat> can either be red or black, I think, right? So I'll draw it like that. Um, but what, oh no, it has to be black. I'm sorry, because the, it has to be black because we're about to create a red node here and a red node here. And the thing about this is that we know that this has to be, so for instance, the reason why we know that this one has to be black is because when we insert this node N, this was a red black tree up until this point, right? So this can't be red because then it would have a red child. So this grandparent, this is the uncle, this is the node, uh, what is this, parent. So basically here, when you look at the uncle and you say, oh, you're a black node. Now the, this is where that extra rule comes in that says null pointers are black because here, uh, the uncle can either be a true node or it can be a null pointer. So if there is nothing over here, so if this is just not even here, then this is the same case, right? So 
that's why we can always assume that the node is going to have an uncle is because you might be like, well, what if there's just nothing on that side of the tree, right? We've inserted something. Let's say that we've inserted, we have our red black tree, we have five, and then you insert eight. And then you insert say 12. And so now you insert 12 and then you're like, well, I haven't inserted anything else into this red black tree. I look over here and the uncle is neither red nor black. It just doesn't exist, right? It's not, there's nothing here. Um, but now you know that that's actually not quite how the, the, you know, the rules say, the rules say that you pretend like this, this null pointer here, right? There's a null pointer sitting here and you're like, ah, it has it has a technical black color, and that that basically allows us to contract a bunch of different cases together, because otherwise we would have to be like, well, if it's black, then you do this, and then if it's null pointer, you basically do the exact same thing. It's just the thing is null pointer. I did, in fact, I did say that, and this null pointer is uh, black, right? So, what do you do in this case? Right? So what you do in this case is you rotate and then you recolor. So basically we're gonna rotate this way. Uh, we're gonna rotate against the direction of the insertion. So we're gonna rotate left in this case. Now, if all of this, so there's always a symmetric case here. So I haven't drawn out the symmetric case because, um, because I haven't. So uh, grandparent, Oh wait, let's let's actually do the rotation. So if we rotate the parent up, then the thing we're gonna end up with is this. And I haven't done any recoloring yet, so we're just gonna end up with the parent, right? The node, and then we're gonna end up with this thing here, the grandparent, which will be black. And we will end up with, technically, if the parent has a a tree over here, it goes over and becomes the grandparent's right tree. So if we name this alpha, this will be alpha, and then this will be u. Okay, so let's calculate black heights here, right? So up until this point, um, this tree basically had, basically if there's, if there's subtrees here, which there could be, um, the black heights here were all equal until this this node came up or either percolated up or was inserted and Here the black height is too big. So here we're gonna have BH as the black height. We'll have the BH as the black height and here um, Oh, no, this is just a red red violation. So this will be BH This will be BH because we haven't messed with the black heights yet. And so this is BH plus one Okay so this tree alpha has a height of BH. This tree U has a height of or BH, right? Because this could have subtrees as well, or it could just be null, right? It depends if BH is zero or, or not. Um, and so then this is BH plus one, but then you see that like these trees here only had height BH. And so the problem here is that this has a height of BH plus one. And so when, when we get up here, this, there's no more uh, black nodes in the way to add one more to the height, so we're, we're gonna have a problem. Um, so we have to fix this, right? And so how do we fix it? We fix it by swapping the colors, right, of the grandparent and the parent. So we swap colors now. So basically you push the red down like this Well, actually, I'm sorry. You can recolor the, you recolor the node. So there's a reason why you don't want to uh, push the red color down in this case, but I think this is what you do. And so at this point, then you see that this is BH plus one and this is BH plus one. And this is a red node now. And the thing is that you're like, well, now we're satisfied, unless of course this is the root. If this is the root, you recolor it. And if it's not the root, then you set 
um, basically the node equals to the parent and then uh, you call fix up on that. So basically now you go fix up, fix up at the parent level, right? Because after the rotation, now the parent is up higher. So uh, before I swap colors, you said there was a height difference. There is, right? Because this guy here is at BH plus one. This guy here is still at BH because it's a red node, so it doesn't increase the black height, right? We only count black nodes. And so here, once you get up to this parent node, this is a slight problem because this, this grandparent had a height of BH plus one. This parent, uh, this node here has a height of BH. And so it, it can't, it can't work, right? Because then the black height here is undefined. So this is how we fix the, the undefinition. We basically recolor this one black. The reason why, I'm, so you have two options here, right? You can either push the red color down here and make this one black, or you can do vice versa. But the only reason why you might be a little afraid is because what if the grandparent has a subtree here, right? So the grandparent has a subtree here. The grandparent was black to start with, and it has a black height of BH, but do you know that the first node in this subtree is black? The answer is you don't. It could actually be a red node. So if you accidentally push the color of the parent down onto this grandparent here, then the problem is that you could actually be creating a red-red violation on the other side of the tree, right? And so that's that's kind of the reason that they don't do that. Um, it would be equivalent if there were no children and no subtrees and basically it were just these three nodes. If it's just these three nodes, then you're perfectly happy. But if it's not just these three nodes, you always have to think like, basically, even if a subtree has a black height of BH, you have to kind of pretend that it ha might have a red root. Because if it has a red root, like these can't have red roots because we've already fixed up the problems here. So these definitely have to have black roots. But the point is that who cares because this one's gonna, this one's like, we're gonna flip this color to black and, and so this is gonna be okay. But we can't flip this color to red because this might not be okay. So let's just pull up the, the visualization and let's just insert some stuff into a red black tree. Um, and the reason why this is kind of useful is because honestly, this is like the best way to kind of actually learn what's going on. So we insert 20, right? And let me slow down the animation speed just a little bit so that I can actually talk through it. Otherwise, it's going to go so fast that I can't even say anything by the time it's done. So this was technically inserted as a red node, but because of the rule, what is it, two, that the root color is always black. Is that real two, I think? Um, you know what? I could always just pull up the rules, and then I would know. Yes, rule two. So I said something correct for once. Um, okay. And then uh, let's insert... 10, right? And so you remember by secret rule six, you always insert as red. So here we go. And there it is. And what does it do? Nothing, right? It doesn't recolor because it's not a violation of anything. And so now let's, let's create a violation, right? Let's insert five. So five is going to be a red, red violation, right? So we see here that it's a red, red violation because uh, this 10 has a red child. And then we look over and we say, aha, I've got you, right? Now we're in the case where the uncle is black. And you might say, wait a second, the uncle doesn't even exist, right? Because you go up to the parent, you go up to the grandparent, and you go down to the other, um, you go down to the other child of the grandparent, and you ask, like, what color are you? And the answer is, it doesn't answer because it's null pointer, right? But here's the good thing. Uh, if you get to a null pointer, you get to assume. So what, what do we do in this case? What we do in this case is we rotate the parent up. So let's step forward by one. We're going to rotate the parent up. And then remember what we have to do. So the, the general rule, so we could technically recolor this node red and black. So let's see what they do here. Yep, so they can recolor, they can swap the colors here. because it had no children, 
right? But okay, so let's let's try to get it into another condition. So let's insert say 25. So 25 is going to be what? Uh, it's going to insert here. It's going to be a red red violation with another black. Uh, what is it? Black uncle? Oh no, wait. I'm sorry. It has a red uncle. Red uncle. Because remember what the uncle is. The uncle is the parent's sibling. So you have to go parent sibling, right? And so here in this case we see that the parent's sibling is a red node. So what we do, remember, is we recolor these two nodes black. And technically, we recolor this one red. So there we go. We push, we push the blackness down from the grandparent. But now we have another, the only violation we have left, right, because uh, the black heights are all the same. The, um, the red parents have black children everything is fine except for rule two which just says uh the root of the tree is red color black done <clears throat> so let's look at a case where we insert 22 i'm gonna have to do is is now in the zigzag pattern right because um i hope not I'll take a drink. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, so now we're in the zigzag configuration, right? Um, ancestors, ancestors can mean anything, right? So basically like this node has a parent of 25. That's one of its ancestors. And then its grandparent is 20, and its great-grandparent is 10. So basically, in, when you say ancestor in a tree, what you mean is literally any, any node on the way back up to the root. Um, so we're gonna, do have, we're gonna have to do a rotation here. So basically, when you're in the zigzag pattern, you have to do two rotations. So first, we're gonna rotate, uh, okay. We're gonna to have to rotate this one up to be the parent. Uh, here we go, uh, almost, there we are. And, and the only reason why we do this rotation is that now we're in the case, the happy case, right? Where we look at this thing and we say, okay, we're in a red, red violation case with a black uncle and it's all in the same direction, right? So now we can, um, we can do the, the rotation here where we rotate 22 up to be the new subroot. And so let's do that, rotate, and then recolor. There we go. So now let's see, uh, what else can we insert? Let's insert uh, 20 or let's insert 15 because that's something to do, right? That'll get us another violation. And I think that it'll, it's a good example because what it's going to do is it's going to give us the example where, um, so remember what this is going to do. This is going to recolor now because the uncle is red. So no rotations are going to be done. Yep. Node and parent are both red. Um, Uncle of red node is red, push blackness down. There we go. And so now let's look at this case and just ask ourselves, like what's going on here? Um, are we violating the black height provision? Are we, black, are, are we doing that? And so the answer is here, the black height is one, two, if I'm not counting the null nodes as, as anything. And um, then here the height is one, two, here the height is one, two, right? So this is all correct. Uh, I think we're done, right? And so now if we insert, let's say, we have to insert something else, so let's insert 13. Okay. And you see why I wanna insert 13, because 13 is gonna have, um, it's gonna be a red, red violation, so what happens, right? And it has a black node, so it's gonna to have to rotate. So here we go. Um, let's rotate. Yep, there we go. And then we have to recolor. 
there we are. So have we fixed all the problems? And the answer is yes, we have, right? Because um, here we have a black node and a black node. So the height, node, height is two, height is two, height is, you know, height is two here. And um, the red nodes don't really count, right? So we're okay. So now let's insert, like basically what I'm doing is I'm just trying to create all different kinds of imbalance conditions. So let's insert 14, right? 14 is gonna go in here. It's gonna go here, gonna go there, gonna go, and now it's gonna be on the right child because I wanna do a zigzag. So remember with a zigzag, all you have to do is you rotate this way, um, which I should say is left, in order to put 14 up as the parent and 13 down as the left child. And the reason why we do, the reason why we do that is because um, it'll allow us to just invoke the cases that we were talking about earlier. Whoops. I think I, I did. Oh, wait a second. I'm sorry. We didn't check the uncle. There we go. We checked the uncle. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So remember, the only thing you have to do first is always check the uncle. The uncle's red. So we actually don't do any rotation. We do recoloring. There we go. I was getting ahead of myself. This is what I wanted to create. Here it is. So now we have a red, red violation, but now you see that this red, red violation isn't as a root, right? The, the, or isn't as leaf nodes. They're down, it's up here in the middle of the tree, right? So we still have to do something about this, right? So basically what do we do? This red, red violation, we have a red, red and a black parent and a black uncle. So we're gonna actually have to rotate. So the first thing we're gonna do is rotate 15 up So we're gonna have to rotate up like this, and then you're gonna have to be like, okay, careful, careful, right? Because is the are the, all the black heights preserved? And the answer is black height of one, black height of one, black height of one, so yes. And then we're gonna have to rotate left. And then at this point, what you say is, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, what's going on here, right? Because, um, You know, here we have a black height imbalance. So here we have a black height of two, and here we have a black height of one. And if we recolor the root black, it's not gonna fix it, right? That's the, that's the one problem here, is if we recolor the root black, then the height here is gonna be two, and the height over here is gonna be three. So we have to do, so we have to do more than one recoloring, right? So what are we gonna do? That recoloring, right? We're gonna push the red down here, because both of, the reason why we can do that is because both of these are black, right? If, if one of these was red, then, then it, we couldn't push the red down here. Otherwise, it would uh, cause issues. But, uh, yep, so we can push the red down there, and then we pull the black node up here. So we flip the color of the grandparent and the parent. And does that fix all the problems? And you see that it does, actually, because the black height here is 2, 2, 2, and 2. So all the black heights are fixed. Do any red nodes have red parents? No, they don't. Is the is the root black? Yes, it is. Um, so there we go. So that's that's basically insertion, right? And I think I've gone through most of the cases for insertion here. So, um, like I I don't know. Uh, I think I might have missed some like maybe if I insert uh, thirteen point five or something. I think you can actually insert decimal values. Um, not quite. That's not right. Look at that. I, I broke the I broke the code. Um, yeah, thirteen point five is not bigger than twenty five. So no, no, no. So what I mean is that yeah, it might evaluate it as one thirty five. Let's see if we delete one thirty five. What it does. Um, if it finds it or if it doesn't, nope, weird. Maybe because it can't convert it to an integer, it's looking at it as, as a string. Um, 
So as it turns out, the, these uh, simulations can accept both uh, strings and integers. So, OK, and so to, to answer your question, so uh, you have to change the color in both cases. So basically, if the uncle is red, you can recolor, and you don't have to do any rotation. If you, if you find that you're in a case where the uncle is black, you have to do um, rotations and then a recoloring. So in both cases, you have to recolor. But in just the reason why I call the red case, the uncle red case, the recolor case, is because uh, you only recolor. Whereas in the when the uncle is black, you have to do a rotation and then a recoloring. And so that's that's how I distinguish between the two cases. So what should I say about all this stuff? Um, is this hard to implement? Yes, this is very hard to implement. Um, there's a lot of code and a lot of special cases and a lot of null pointer checking and a lot of that kind of stuff. Like, the problem with this is that insertion is actually not as bad as even deletion is, but anyway, okay. Yeah, I don't know. It thought that 135 was, I think it's mainly because like you can insert A. Let's see what this does. Um, at this point, zero. Because now that you've been asked to, you know, you're going to have to to do AVL and display. So definitely not RBT, right? Because the way that your projects are working in this class is that you had the linked list project done. Now you have the tree project, good. And now you're going to have a heap project, which a heap project does use tree structures, but um, they're not binary search trees and you, the rebalancing operations are a lot different, a lot more simple, um, you know, so, and then the last thing is, um, the, the hash table project, which is not really a, a tree structure, uh, collisions. So hash collisions only happen in hash tables. So there's no collisions in, uh, yeah, you'll have to deal with collisions in the hash table project, most likely, but not not for trees. There's no such thing as a collision in a tree, right? If you insert another A, right, this will just become probably the left child of A. I don't know. No, no, the right, right, because it's equal. So what's going to happen in this case, right? Um, you see that the uncle here, so it's you always have to be careful, right? You can't be like me and just jump right to the answer. You have to be like, uh, here's the node, here's the parent, here's the grandparent, here's the uncle. The uncle doesn't exist, so it's black. So if we're in a black case, we rotate. So now we're, it's, we're in a straight line case with the, with the black uncle, so we rotate left. And then we will flip-flop the, color, flip -flop the colors of the, um, of the parent and the, and the child. And now, of course, you see that this is really a terrible uh, tree now because we have both integers and strings in here. Um, in incidentally, when you test your AVL tree, right? Um, let's say AVL tree visualization. So you can test the AVL tree on things like hello <laughs> or, or maybe four letters, uh, robot, right? Um, zebra and then of course you see that there's a height imbalance here and so you'll rotate um, now the real question is does this detect uh, if I do hella oh wait oh it, oh it only it only accepts four letters so okay so I, su I suggest that you play around with your AVL tree with this visualization open and make sure that it produces the correct, um, the correct visualization, the correct uh, structure of the tree. The reason why you want to do this before you move on to the uh, splay tree is because a splay trees, at least in my opinion, are like three or four times easier than the AVL tree. And 
they use the same operations, so you'll already have coded the, ro the rotation operations. So you can just recode the rotation operations, uh, make sure you get those right, and then for the splay tree, you basically just always have to splay up to the parent. So if you ever find, if you ever insert, if you ever delete, which in this in this case, the only two operations you're doing are um, insert and find. You're not actually doing delete, right? So maybe maybe uh, after this project is due, I'll give you an assignment where I ask you to actually implement a delete operation in a binary search tree. Um, and that's that's only because you're never gonna actually have done it in a project. And um, I won't maybe I won't make you do any rebalancing. We'll just ask you to like straight up implement a binary search tree delete, right? Something where you find a predecessor, find a successor, you move the successor up, you delete this, you know, you delete the child node or the the leaf node, and there you go, right? So something like that. Um, I don't want to make it too complicated, but also I want it. It's good to at least have done it once in your life. Um, if you delete a node between with two children, does the higher value child become the new parent? Um, uh, no, remember how deletion in binary search trees works, right? So um, let's 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 insert a few more things, right? And then uh, let's see, H I J. So maybe a little insert the letter J. Uh, nope. I typed H instead of J. So whatever, it'll actually this will be fine because it'll do the rotation. So here it'll it'll do this. So if you're saying like we delete H, right? Uh, does the higher value child become the new parent? The answer is uh, in an in an AVL tree, you just look for successors as usual. So you do the standard deletion, and then you fix it up. Right, you check the heights as you go back up. So, for instance, here if we delete, um, I guess we'll delete hell. Um, well, I guess that's not a problem. We need to make a, a bigger tree, so let me just insert a bunch of stuff. Uh, C, D, R, T, C. I guess uh, maybe K. Finally, J. Um, let's say if we insert K A uh, or T. All right. And so if you're saying, are you? So let's. So now that we have this tree thing, actually, I think this is pretty close to the um, the like complete unbalancing that you can get, right? Remember how I showed that in a an AVL tree. Okay, yeah, so let's delete Robo. And now let me, let me slow this down because otherwise, if I, if I don't slow this down, it's going to go so fast that we're not even going to be able to say anything or think anything. So remember what it's doing. There we go. So let's skip back and see what it did. It said it found the Robo. find largest node in left subtree. So for some reason, and remember what the largest node in the left subtree is, that's the predecessor. So it's, for some reason, uh, I think their regular binary search tree delete finds a successor. Their AVL search tree delete finds the predecessor. And remember that there's two equivalent ways to do it. You can either do the predecessor or you can do the successor. It doesn't really matter. The only distinction is just that like, um, well, what's the only real distinction? The only real distinction is just that you either search the left subtree or the right subtree. But you notice here that they didn't; it didn't matter, right? They just found the success or found the predecessor. Which you go into the left, you find the the largest node, so you go as far right as possible. So, yep, we found it. Here it is, and then you swap it up so R become a robo becomes R, and then you have to delete this node. And I think the only so this is skipping a lot of like logical steps when it just points to here, but you notice that this has no. Uh, well, I, I actually I shouldn't say that because the predecessor here the predecessor is actually just this node K A, and so now that we need to delete this node, we just set this node to be the predecessor and we get rid of it. 
So, but that's only because we're down at the leaf case. Yep, so yeah, that's exactly right. Um, deletion is kind of a recursive thing. So for instance, if if the thing that you, if the successor, let's try to create something. Um, let's actually just do it in a regular binary search tree so I can guarantee there's no, um, there's no rotations. So let's insert like R, T, of course, I can't type because I have my, my tablet on me. So I can't actually even see my keyboard. I just randomly hit keys. Um, uh, let's see, um, W, W, A. B A Y. Okay, I think okay. So now I've created a pretty random looking B S T, right? And let's see if I can put in. Um, so if I I'm gonna I'm gonna target this node for deletion. Let me just check to make sure that they actually do delete the the successor on this one. Whoa, that was too fast. <laughs> Didn't even see. Um, so, ah, so we need something over here. So what's between V and T, I guess U, and then we can do like T A, uh, U B. Okay, cool. So now let's delete V again. Oh Lord, too much. Oh, okay. That was too fast, but also we noticed that I, I made a mistake. Actually, um, this algorithm finds the predecessor regardless. So their AVL and their um, just regular binary search tree always finds the predecessor rather than the successor. Um, so if you ask the question, like, why are they doing that? The answer is that actually it's 50-50 arbitrary, right? Some books will say find the predecessor. Some books will say find the successor. It's really um, like the difference between it is really just like one of symmetry, one of like the algorithm doesn't really make a choice, right? Because, and so you as the programmer have to make a choice. And so it actually determines the structure of your tree. Um, technically, if you were pretty insane, you could always generate a random number and 50% of the time you delete the predecessor and 50% you delete the successor or something like that. But I mean, uh, technically that's a, that's an algorithm you could do. Um, generally you don't do that mainly because that adds additional complexity to your code. And that, ad that adds in conditions where like edge cases where you're like, you know, maybe you've tested the successor deletion like 15 times and you've only tested the predecessor delete like one time and it doesn't actually work a hundred percent or something like that. So, Anyway, so now that we know that it's it's doing predecessor delete, let's um, add something in where this, so this will be the predecessor. And so let's add in uh, some no, some children of that predecessor. Um, there we go. And so now let's try to delete V again and see what happens. So when we delete V, it'll find V. And now we want to find the predecessor. So we find, we go to U and then we scan down and find that predecessor. We swap it up and then we delete that node. So that's basically how, how deletion works is you find the node, you scan down to find the, in this case, the predecessor, you move the predecessor up to the node. And then technically if this node had children, you would want to, you would have to run the deletion algorithm on this again. Okay. So let me quickly go over uh, the most complicated thing about red black trees. Which is the deletion. So 
So let's go back to here. Um, so there's basically, and I, I wrote up this PDF uh, about red black deletion. So basically, uh, let me see if I can generate a case one. I'll show you what case one is, and then I will show you how to do it. So basically, there's four cases for deletion. Um, here's one case, and so what I've done here is I've written up all the black heights. So the node that has a yellow circle on it is the node that is the current node. So that means the node that that the deletion came from. So that's why whenever you come from that node, the black height has been subtracted by one. Because, well, actually, I should say this: there is a there is a giant case in deletion in a red black tree. So this is really nice. What if you delete a red node? So let's say that we delete 22, for instance, right? Or let's say we delete A. You might be like, hmm, what happens in this case? Is it, is it something really complicated? And so what it does is it finds A. Well, oh god, I don't know if we'll find this A or that A. Okay, found node to delete. Find largest node. Okay. Uh, so you see how it found the first A, it found its predecessor, it moved the 25 up, and now it's about to kill off a red node, right? So even though this node where we swap the value up to is black, the node that's about to be deleted here is red. So what happens in that case, right? So we remove the node where we copied it, and we delete it, and it's gone. Now here's the question. We deleted a red node. Did that affect anything, right? Did that break anything? And the answer is no, because you notice that the black heights never changed, right? So if you delete a red node from the tree, then you're actually in good shape because like if we delete, um, so yeah, delete deleted node was red, no tree rotations required, terminate, right? So if you delete a red leaf, you are happy. Right, because that means that in a red black tree you have absolutely no fix up to do. Um, because even if you deleted a red node that had a like a, a you know a black child, even if you move two nodes closer together like this, and this node was red, it's okay to have a black child. And if this node was black, it's okay to have a black child. So, um, so it doesn't violate any rules of the tree. It never changes the black height, so everything is good. So. Let's do something a little bit different. Let me see if I can find um, a case. Let me burst up the animation speed because I want to I want to delete that. And now I want to say what say we delete 25. So let me see what kind of case is this. So generally un, instead of looking at the uncle for deletion you're going to look at the sibling. And so basically, we are in a sibling is black case. And so um, if the sibling is black, that's actually not a case one, that's a case two. So let me show you case two right now. Whoops. Let me show you case two. So in case two, what's going to happen is we're going to have a black height of BH minus one. We're going to have the sibling, which is black. So that's the important thing, right? The sibling of X is black. The parent is undetermined. That's why I color this. This is a red black node. The reason why I color it like that is because you don't know what its color is. It could either be red or black. And the sibling has two black children. So let's look at that. Does the sibling have two black children if we're going to delete 25? And you say, well, it doesn't have any children, right? So it's going to be, um, so those, those children are null nodes, so they are considered to be black. So what we're going to do here so we divide it into two cases. Case 2A, where the parent is red, we recolor the sibling uh, black. I'm sorry, we, color, we recolor the sibling red, we recolor the parent black. So this is just a recoloring here, right? So up here, the sibling was black. Down here, the sibling is red. And here, we didn't know the color, but here, we, we changed the color to black. If the parent is black, on the other hand, then we have a problem, right? Because we can't assign a black node to be black 
So you'll hear in a lot of books that this is like a double black condition. And the reason why they call this a double black condition is because basically you pretend like you have red tokens and black tokens. And like this node already has a black token. And basically what you do is you hand it another black token. And then when you do that, you also have to continue to do uh, fix up. So then this becomes this becomes the new node and you do fix up on this node. But we're actually in the case paint a case 2a, right? Because the node, the parent was red. So we get to we get basically to swap the color of the sibling and the parent. So let's do that. Uh, let's delete this. Whoa. <laughs> I always love when it goes so fast. Uh, let's see 20, 20. Let's delete 20. And so let's slow it down. Delete, pause, step forward, step forward. So we're going to delete this node. So this node is gone. And so now we see, okay, this node is null pointer. This node has uh, is is black. So what we're going to have to do is push the, the black up there and swap the color down. So you see that that's what happened, right? Um, basically, we swap the colors here. And because this node was red, we're OK. Um, OK. So let's insert some more nodes. Let's see if we can get a case 1. So how do we get to a case 1? We need the sibling to be red. And we need that to be black. So let's insert 20 back into the tree, because that'll be red. Uh, what have I done? OK, now let's insert uh, 19. Why can't 22 be red? Uh, let's go back. Oh, oh, why can't 22 be red? Good question, good question. So the reason why 22 can't be red is a because it's going to violate this this red red condition um right so like if we do this and we see that we're going to delete 20 ah crap um let's get back again well so not really so think about it this way um that's a good question so let me slow this down so that i can then pause it and then step forward good so okay you're all happy that we're going to kill this node off now let's look at this tree right now and ask the question what's going on right is this a violation of the red red condition no it's not a violation of the red red condition so you're right about that but it's a violation of another condition what's the other condition the black height condition right rule five because here we have black height one two one two one two one two one uh oh right there's this there's this um there's a way out of the tree this way right there's an escape path you can go this way and get out of the tree at a black height of one which means that the black height of the tree is not well defined anymore right so that's why we cannot just leave this as red um and the the reason why we steal the black color from this node is because if we push the black up to here and we push the red down to here, so you see here, if we if we uh, were allowed to keep a null leaf or some kind of like, if we were allowed to keep some kind of virtual black leaf, then this would keep the black heights balanced, right? But we're not allowed to keep this one because this one's a null leaf, so it's already gone. So what we have to do, then we, we flip the colors. And so when you flip the colors, you see the black heights are now one, two. And it doesn't matter if you leave the tree this way through this red node because one, two, red, gone. That's two. One, <coughs> excuse me. Um, uh, one, two, and then you leave through this way, which gets, you know, you're gone. Um, and it doesn't matter because you didn't cross through a red node, you didn't cross through a black node. So you're out of the tree. Uh, one, two. And finally, one, two. So uh, that's that. Okay.
Does that make sense though about, I mean, sorry about the sneeze again. I, I think I've, uh, I think the house is dusty today or something. Because when the house is more dusty, I end up getting a little bit congested. Um, but it does make sense now, right? Because you can't keep this note as red. Because otherwise, basically every escape path through the tree has to have the same black height. So let me see if I can trick this tree into... Well, so if you think of a null pointer as having a height of 1 then you have to recount all the things that I'm doing. So I'm counting the height of a black a black leaf as zero. Um, but if you want to count it as one, then what you would do is you'd go one, two, three, one, two, three. So let's show the null leaves. So you would go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two red node three, one, two, red node three, one, two, three, one, two, red three, one, two, red three. Right? So, and I really don't care, like, mathematically, logically, black, red, blackedly, it doesn't matter um, if you count these as zero or one, right? Because as soon as you go gone, you're like, huh, did that affect anything? And you're like, well, it doesn't matter because, um, you know, now you just have one, two instead of one, two, three. You've gotten rid of a black node along every child because every every last thing has to be a null pointer, right? Because you can't have an infinite tree. So, um, okay. All right, so um, what am I going to do? So let me see if I can get us into a case one if I can. So I want to make a... Uh, I want to make a tree with a, let's see if I can insert a bunch of nodes. What am I doing? Okay. Uh, 19, 18. Absolutely. I'm going to, I'm definitely going to do that. So, ah, okay. Oh, excellent. Excellent. This is, this is, I think, going to be a case one if we delete 25. And let me show you what a case one is again. I haven't even got to case three or four, and I'm probably not going to today. I'll finish up with cases three and four next time, and maybe I'll do a little bit more on splay trees, just reviewing. I know this stuff is really complicated, but... Um, and I, I haven't put in the rules and the insertion into it yet. I think I'm going to do that just so that I can um, complete this diagram. But you see that... I did a little bit of work on this because I wanted every red-black deletion case to be completely spelled out, and uh, there it is. <laughs> every little... So you're going to ask, like, do I have to ever memorize this? Am I ever going to be asked this on an exam? The answer is no. The, the most I might ever do is give you this PDF document and make you kind of explain which cases are being used at which points during a deletion. So that's, that's like the maximum of what you're going to have to do with this because the only way you're ever going to do this in like real life is you're going to have the book with you. You're going to have a PDF diagram with you. You're never going to be doing this from memory. Okay. So anyway, okay. So now we're in a case where the sibling is red, right? So we're in the case where the sibling is red. And so what do we do here? So let's delete 25 and see what happens, right? Because here, it seems like what I'm telling you to do is just swap the colors. So let's see if that's what happens, right? Swap the colors and then rotate towards the parent. So we want to make this structure here. So let's see if we do that. So let's delete 25. Oh, Lord, too fast, too fast. Couldn't even see. Um. All right, so let's go, let's go pause. So now I think what it's gonna do is it sees that we have a red sibling. So then what it's what it probably wants to do, so let's see, right? Null leaf has a red sibling. Rotate tree to make sibling black. So we're gonna rotate the tree up 
right? That's what it's doing here in, in my diagram. It's rotating, remember, it's rotating the sibling up to be the parent here. And then we're going to have to do some recoloring. So why are we going to have to do some recoloring? Because if we look at this here, what's the, the black height here is two, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. Here it's one, two, uh-oh. But then here it's one, two, uh-oh, one, two, three. So that's still okay, but there's, there's just issues. So we're going to have to do some kind of recoloring. So the sibling is going to have to be black. And I think it's going to have to shift the red color down this way. Yep. So the parent is going to have to be black and the, and the, uh, we're going to have to shift the red color down this way and that'll fix the black height colors. Uh, this will fix the black heights and it'll fix the, um, the red, red problems. Okay. Let's see if we can make a case three. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So a case three is this thing. Whoops. Um, a case three is where the parent is undetermined, the sibling is black, but has a red right child, black left child. And there's a similar case, there's a symmetric case where we're on the other side. So basically the, the child over here has to be, um, has to be red. So are we in that case? Uh, we are in that case if we delete five. You see that? We're in case three if we delete five because 14 is red, 13 is black, five is black. The parent can be either one. So if the parent is black, what do we do? I guess we recolor this red. Uh, actually, what do we do? Oh, I'm sorry. We, it seems like we're rotating the sibling up. So we'll rotate the sibling up and then do some recolorings. So let's delete five. So, okay, we're gonna get rid of five. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate the sibling up. So we're gonna see that we have a black child with uh, a... Single rotate. And now what do we have to do? We have to recolor this guy black. And we're good. And you see that in the end, yes, the sibling dot right is black. Cool. The parent is over here. It's black now. And the sibling is black. That's right. That's right. I should have, I should have, uh, played that song. And let's see if I can, ah, if we delete 18, it's going to be a case of four. And so this is a case four. So the case four is this, where you have a, if we delete 18, 18 is black, its sibling is black, the right node is black because it's null, and the left node is red. So whenever you're in a zigzag configuration, actually this is kind of a nice condition because what'll end up happening is we're gonna just do a rotation first. We're gonna rotate 20 up, and then we'll be in a case where we can kind of recolor everything and then we'll be in case three. So let me show you how that happens. So let's delete, delete 18. So you notice the sibling is black. The, the zigzag kid is red. The zigzag kid is red. So we, when we delete, right? Okay, cool. Um, so now the zigzag kid is red. Oh, wait a second. Huh. Oh, I'm sorry. Ha. 
I, I missed the fact that this thing had a red child, right? We're actually deleting 17. So, um, so 17 got deleted. That was red, so we don't care. I was like, wait a second. Now we're in a balance condition. All right, now I have to delete 17. 17 has to go. All right, so now this is the actual case, uh, case four. So here we go. So now this note has no children, so they're all black children, so we're gonna delete it. And now the it's gonna draw on the null leaf. Black sibling, red alternate child. So you have to rotate it to make, the, make it the opposite nephew. So you rotate here, and then you, we're gonna have to do another uh, rotation. Well, actually, nope, yep. So we recolor and then we do another rotation. So one rotation can fix it. Rotate left. And then you see that we still have to do another recoloring because the thing is that now the black heights are messed up again. So basically the point here is that if we go back, whoops, I wanna delete 17, uh, skip forward. And now I want to delete 18. Yep, delete 18, it's gone, null leaf, case three. So basically what happens here when we do this recoloring, now you see that actually that this is now back into case three, right? Because um, in case three, the parent is undetermined, which is okay. So what I mean by undetermined is that we're cool whether it's red or black, so we don't care. The sibling, the node we just deleted was a black node, right? So null leaf is black. Um, the sibling is black, and s dot right is now red again. So then we do the same thing here. So what do we do? We rotate. We rotate the sibling up, so si uh, twenty becomes the parent, right? Uh, twenty two becomes the red right child. Nineteen becomes the black right child, and then we just have to basically color everything black. And the reason why is because um, we see that there's a color imbalance here. This has a black height of BH minus one. This has a color, uh, a black height of BH. And so this black height at the sibling is now undefined. So when we do the rotation, the black height's now gonna be undefined, right? Because here it's one and here it's zero. And, or I guess here it's one and here it's two. And then when you finally recolor, then all the black heights are the same again. So basically what this does is all of these different cases just kind of go through the tree and fix up as much as possible the black height stuff. So um, it's actually an interesting fact because the one thing I'm going to say before I let you guys go is that as it turns out, there's only one of these cases that's infinite or uh, not infinite, but doesn't terminate. And let me explain that case to you. So. Um, all these cases that I've shown you, case one, two, three, four, of them, the only case is case two. And let me show you why case two doesn't terminate. So basically here, the parent is undetermined. So if the parent is red, we can do this type of thing. So we basically uh, recolor this node. Uh, if we recolor this node black, then we're good because this node had a black height of BH minus one. Everything has a height of BH minus one, BH minus one, BH minus one. The children have a height of BH minus two, but who cares? And so this is all balanced again, right? The only problem is case 2B. When you get to case 2B, then your problem is actually that you are in a case where um, you have a black node, but it's possible that it... Uh, but the, if, if the parent was already black, then this is actually now a double black node, right? It has two black tokens. So it has to shift the, uh, it has to give away one of its black tokens. And so then this is the only case here, right? So this is the only time where you call the fix up again at the parent level. So, um, so that's it. So basically every other case terminates after, so a case four reduces to a case three and then terminates. A case one terminates. A case two A terminates. But a case two B, you have to actually call the fix up on the parent. So that's the only time where fix up actually has to go back up another level.
All right. So anyway, I'm going to finish this document. I'm, I'm going to send out this document now, but maybe I'll... Uh... But, you know, uh, I'll, I'll probably finish it up and then send out uh, another version. Uh, definitely. All right. All right, so that's it for today. I'm sure that this has not been illuminative in any word, in any, uh, in any sense. But uh, okay. <laughs>